Hi, this is Ilya Montanari, and today I'm here to talk to you, together with Susanna Ozika, about our paper and uh, the space application, space superpower, making an impact to the sustainable development goals in sub-Saharan Africa. So, as an introduction, and over the past, let's say, 10 years, uh, I've experienced myself and I witnessed a canvas explosion in uh, space startups in particular the application, their investment, and their opportunities. Over 2,200 companies financed uh, with over 450 million. So it's needless to say that uh, this money, this creativity, and the follow-up investment have created a very large amount of opportunities to grow worldwide, but also for the benefit of uh, underserved countries like developing world. So what we provide you today out of these 2,200 companies, just two case studies that we have distilled, but these are two particular ones where we were able to link their impact into uh, the global challenges that Sub-Saharan Africa faces together with the business opportunity. It means that uh, this case study impact people, planet, as well as profit. So we apply impact assessment methodologies that are employed by international institutions such as World Bank. This aims to statistically demonstrate significant results in the sustainable development goals as created in the framework by the United Nations. Cut a long story short, let's have a view of the real star of this paper that are the case study as presented in details by Susanna Ozika. My name is Susanna Ozika, and together with Elia Montanari and Celine Dubron, we have conducted a research which objective was to quantitatively measure the impact of ISA business applications projects in sub-Saharan African countries on sustainable development goals with all 17 of them you can see on the slide. And to measure the impact, SDG indicators defined by United Nations were used. In the past, the problem of how to measure SDGs impact has been raised and some solutions have been proposed. Most of the re recent studies showcase the need to assess the sustainability indicator, but they do not mention a quantitative statistical method which could be used to measure the impact of certain policies on, or in our case projects, on certain SDGs or more specific SDG targets. In this research, we used widely used econometric modeling method, which is called difference in difference regression to quantitatively assess the impact certain projects have on SDGs, which can lead to better decisions in the future regarding sustainability. And a little bit of background of the methodology we used. So the methodology we used is called difference in difference, and it attempts to mimic an experimental research design using observational study, study data. In our case, the observational data is SDG indicator change over time. At some point in time, a program has been introduced, a program or a project. And we can see how the indicator value has changed after the introduction of the program. To measure the impact of the project, we calculate values of the indicator in a counterfactual scenario. So in a world in which the policy was not introduced, the impact of the program is the difference between the value of the indicator in real world and the value of the indicator from the counterfactual scenario. To calculate the latter, we use control groups. So a group of countries in which the project was not implemented, but is characterized by the same trend of SDG indicator that we use to measure our project's impact. So as I mentioned, um, Two projects uh, implemented with the help of ESA in sub-Saharan African countries were selected for this research. They are Sway for Edu, which impacts uh, SDG number four, which is quality education, and SATF in Africa, which impacts SDG 17, which is partnership for the goals. 
And uh, let's focus first on Sway for Edu, which is a project which is space powered and it supports e-learning services and internet access in rural schools. So for this project, we used indicator which is related to SDG indicator 4.A.1, which is proportion of schools with internet access for pedagogical purposes, which for each country uses ranks based on the proportion of schools with internet access. So rank, if country is ranked one, it means that 100% of schools had access to, to internet. So for this project, we applied difference in difference methodology. And based on the results from that, we have observed that countries can go down up to seven points in ranks thanks to Sway for Edu. So that means that uh, Sway for Edu contributed to SDG number four, and we have statistical evidence of, of that contribution. Uh, the similar results were obtained for SATFIN Africa, which is a project which aimed to provide reliable and secure financial services in, remo in remote areas in African emerging countries. So we measured the, uh, its impact with SDG indicator 17.3.2, which is volume of remittance as proportion of total GDP. So the impact is statistically significant, which means that ISA's projects a project impacted goal 17, which is partnership for the goals. So in the treated countries, so where the uh, where this project was intru introduced, the SDG indicator rose by 1.62 percentage points. And these results show that ESA helps to contribute to United Nations framework. In the future, the research results may benefit from further testing of regional level data for the projects and different statistical methods should be applied. But we did, uh, we were able to, to quantitatively measure the impact. We, the first step was made and it was quite successful. Last few details on uh, this succinct but very important paper. You've heard about Sway for Edu that is uh, produced and serviced by the Italian company OpenNet. And I want to raise its relevance because uh, it's so actual and uh, together with uh, the confinement and the COVID and the quarantines that we are now facing because it provides the opportunity not only to Sub-Saharan, Africa, but also European countries and also around the globe to uh, reach out for better education. More modernly, we, we would be referred uh, to as uh, EdTech. Here, the power of space I like, uh, allows connectivity to provide effective e-learning services to support education in rural schools in South Africa. And this boosts the interest of teachers and children in developing IT skills. The second one you've heard of is SAP in Africa by the Belgian company SATE DSL and to, in today's lingo we would refer to it as a fintech solution type of solution. SAP in Africa offers to date a reliable and secure financial service in remote and underserved areas in African emerging countries at competitive cost. So thank you very much for listening to us today and uh, we would welcome any comments opportunity to expand this uh, analysis to other case studies, in particular to the one that are capable to match what is actually the classic and legendary three people, planet and profit. Thank you very much and goodbye.